Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. One of my favorite moments in gaming was back in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. You remember, back when it was fun and they hadn't run out of ideas yet. After hours of ducking bullets while my health regenerated and pumping entire magazines into Michelin man-sized juggernauts, I finally got to don the massive bulletproof suit myself and waddle into battle, laughing at the puny mortals who futilely thought their silly guns could harm me through my impervious fat suit. Ha 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 Come at me, bros. But even the very best armor won't make me invincible, and after four minutes of being a god among squishy men, the armor broke and it was back to popping into cover while my world goes red and splotchy. The truth is that what we call bulletproof vests are more accurately described as bullet resistant. So if I wanted to make impenetrable, truly bulletproof body armor, what would it look like? The first place my mind goes is to the suits of armor old tiny knights wore. Metal is tough, and the thought of being covered in that makes me feel all safe and warm. But upon further research, it turns out the exact the exact reason plate armor of old fell out of use was because of firearms. Though armor and firearms coexisted for about 300 years, by the middle of the 17th century, ballistic weapons were powerful enough to make even specially treated or thickened armor futile for feuding feudal knights. So if guns from the 1650s were too much for armor, imagine what a modern day high powered rifle would do. Maybe the answer then is to just one up the guns. I'm talking really thick metal armor with no joints that would weaken it. Basically, a big metal box. Of course, it'd be hard to see out of, so maybe I could put a swiveling turret on top and my own gun to shoot back. And it'd be too heavy to move, so it'd have to be motorized. And wheels would be a bad choice since the weight would need to be spread out over a large area to keep me from sinking into mud. So I'd have to fit tracks onto it and, and it's a tank. I've invented the tank. While a tank would keep you safe from bullets and your responsibilities, it's not really body armor in the strictest sense. I want something that fits my body and most parking spaces. Something I can carry easily and move around. So paradoxically, in order to stop a bullet, armor has gone from hard metal to soft fabric. There are multiple fabrics that can stop a bullet, but the one you probably just thought of is Kevlar. Originally developed by DuPont to replace the steel belting in tires, Kevlar has extremely high tensile strength, meaning it takes a lot of energy to stretch the fabric. In fact, Kevlar has five times the tensile strength of steel. Kevlar molecules are long twisted coils of plastic. These molecules are entangled together into threads, and these threads are interwoven tightly into sheets, and several layers of sheets are stacked together to make a bulletproof vest. When a bullet strikes the vest, the woven Kevlar acts like a net, getting stretched in all directions and dispersing the energy of the bullet. It also flattens the bullet into a mushroom shape further dispersing the energy. The combined effects keep the bullet from penetrating the vest and the soft, squishy organs behind it. That's not to say you wouldn't still feel the bullet. Police officers who have been shot while wearing a vest liken it to being hit by a hammer, and you'll still have a bruise behind the vest where the fabric deformed and pressed into you, but it's a heck of a lot better than having no vest at all. Kevlar alone can't stop everything, especially as bullets get bigger and faster. So the philosophy of armor makers is to make bullets smaller and slower by breaking them. They achieve this using ceramics like lumina oxide, silicon carbide, or the extremely dense boron carbide. These materials break up and slow down bullets, allowing layers of Kevlar behind them to catch the fragments. The drawback is these are ceramics, like your mom's fine china, making them brittle. When a bullet hits them, that area shatters and won't stop another bullet. The plates can even be cracked and broken just from dropping them on the ground. To get around these drawbacks, armorers have experimented with polyethylene plastics, the same sort of plastic the milk jug in your fridge is made of. These armor plates work by using the bullet's spin to create friction and to melt the plastic, which absorbs the bullet. When the bullet stops, the polyethylene cools and hardens again. It basically turns you into a T-1000 is what I'm saying. Scientists are working on even crazier ways to stop a bullet. If you thought fabric, ceramics, or plastic sounded nonsensical, wait till you hear about the fluids they're developing. Several different researchers are experimenting with certain fluids to either make Kevlar more flexible or eliminate it altogether. These aren't just any fluids though. Most liquids change their structure when the temperature or pressure changes, but these special liquids are known as non-Newtonian fluids, and they change their viscosity when they're subject to stress. The harder you hit them, the more the molecules react and solidify. You can try this at home by mixing cornstarch and water. If you dip your hand in the mixture, it goes right in. But if you slap it, the suspended starch grains can't move fast enough to make way, so they stack and lock together like a solid. 
It's the same idea in bullet-resistant materials. When a bullet strikes, a soft, flexible vest becomes a rigid shell in an instant. Not only will they stop a bullet, but the vest will deform less than a Kevlar vest would, reducing trauma. Armor always has trade-offs. Lighter armor that allows for more comfort and movement won't stop high-powered rounds, heavy armor with ceramic plates will. But maybe one day, you won't need to compromise one aspect of the armor for a bonus elsewhere. Researchers have been experimenting with graphene, a material made of a lattice of carbon atoms just one atom thick. Graphene is the do-everything material of the future and has many exciting properties like incredible conductivity and super lightweight. It can be used in bioelectrics or to make flexible screens. But on top of all that, it is also insanely strong because of its nanoscale honeycomb shape. Nanoscale. Nano. Wait, where have I seen that before? Computer, dehance. Hey, that's the same pattern as the Crynet nano suit. We did it! We finally talked about the suit! Are you happy, souls, TRZ? Anyway, graphene's tensile strength is 345 times stronger than Kevlar. Researchers have tested its shot-blocking properties and found graphene has twice the stopping power of Kevlar. The thing is, they couldn't test it with an actual bullet. Graphene is so hard to make in large amounts that they had to fire a gold atom at 100 sheets of graphene and extrapolate their results. Graphene is extremely strong and light and flexible, and you could stack a million layers of it and it'd still only be a millimeter thick. The problem now is just making enough of it to make a suit of armor for even one person. Current production techniques are expensive, and the sheets they make aren't very big. But if we ever can mass-produce graphene, we might make our firearms obsolete. Take that, guns. Looks like armor will have the last laugh after all. Until we make better guns. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's say you didn't wear your armor today and a bullet was headed right for your play noggin. What are your odds of survival? Check out our video on headshots to find out. If you have a suggestion for a topic, just keep leaving it in the comments because we actually read them and want to do them. Promise. And don't forget to keep on playing.